said a third time. And honorable Speaker, before I call uh, the Honorable Hillary to second, allow me to take this opportunity, Honorable Speaker, to thank all these members, including those seated on the minority side, for their very active participation. Even those who are belatedly calling for division, like the Honorable CNN. And uh, this is the true spirit of democracy that often the majority will have their way and the minority will always have their say and today we have seen that democracy being exercised in this house that the majority of members of parliament who believe that this is an important agenda for our country the majority of members who believe that we are dealing with a time bomb of millions of our youth who are unemployed sitting through this sitting honorable speaker and even with the support of a few within the minority and uh, honorable speaker allow me once again to single out the honorable member for funyula the honorable john buddy the honorable harry combe the only the honorable my good friend the honorable milio Viambo, who even in absentia from outside the country took time to propose amendments to this particular bill with a view to improving on uh, what we are legislating today. Honorable Speaker, the members like the Honorable Professor Nikal, who is a very diligent member of this House, the Honorable Haro, who has taken time together with his Muslim brothers and sisters to make sure that there are amendments that ensures that this bill captures the spirit of the Sharia law that even as we charge interest, we do not offend our Muslim brothers and sisters uh, as they prepare for the holy month of Ramadan. Let me congratulate the Honorable Haro and the other many Muslim uh, brothers and sisters who are here today who have taken their time. Honorable Speaker, again, as has been said in the past, Honorable Speaker, we are a house... Honorable Speaker, we are a house that debates and considers all matters that of concern to the people of Kenya. Honorable Speaker, as an administration... Where is, where is your card? Because I, I'm trying to get to see your card. Where is your card? Okay, then, then we would ask you to be orderly. Go ahead. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, if you can allow me to continue and ignore the member for Kilifi, uh, the county women rep for Kilifi, who did not have the time to propose amendments. And I was saying this is a house of debate. This is a house where I was saying as an administration, as, as Kenya Kwanzaa, we value every member of this house. And that is why, Honorable Speaker, you saw those amendments by the Honorable uh, Professor Oudo, that made sense, we supported. The amendment by the Honorable Nikal on the qualifications of a chairperson. And I must thank the uh, Professor Nikal, uh, uh, Honorable Oudo, because I remember during second reading, it was uh, Honorable Oudo who pointed out to the gap that existed in the bill on particular qualifications for both the chairperson and the Honorable Nikal picked that up and proposed an amendment. That is how we legislate, Honorable Speaker. We don't legislate by talking on TV stations. We don't legislate by talking in funerals. We legislate on the floor of this house. And that is why I'm taking time to congratulate those members of the minority who have taken time. Unlike many other cowards, Honorable Speaker, who opted to walk out believing that they could intimidate other Azimio members. And I must congratulate these Azimio members who are in the house this afternoon because they have withstood the intimidation and the coercion not to do their work, including the member for Kilifi, Honorable Mbeyu, who has withstood the intimidation to ensure that she is here to legislate not just for her people in Kilifi to get affordable and social housing, not just for students from Kilifi to be able to access institutional housing and policemen and women in Kilifi County, but also teachers and health workers in Kilifi Sub-County Hospital 
to be able to access institutional housing, Honorable Speaker, I must congratulate all these members and welcome back Honorable Nikal, who has come back in absentia. I was congratulating him for being a very diligent member of parliament who takes his work seriously as a member of parliament. Professor Nikal, being a veteran member of this house, we truly appreciate your input, especially in this bill, Honorable Nikal, because your amendments on the chairperson, I was saying in your absentia, Honorable Professor Nikal, that what you said on second reading in the bill, you actualized it by bringing amendments to enrich what was provided for by the proposals of the bill. Honorable Speaker, allow me to immensely congratulate members of our Kenya Kwanzaa Coalition. These members went out together with the President and the Deputy President in 2022. And in every constituency that we went to, we promised the people of Kenya that housing as an agenda would be actualized under the Kenya Kwanzaa Administration. I am happy, Honorable Speaker, that we have a president who has chosen to do not what is politically expedient, not what is popular, but what is right for this country. He has chosen to do what is good for millions, millions of our young people who have no jobs. As I said in moving this bill, Honorable Speaker, this bill is about employment creation. It is about wealth creation. It's about helping Kenyans to access affordable homes creating new homeowners, and therefore generating new wealth in our country and helping to grow our economy that was destroyed by those who are telling us today that when they look back, they feel like crying. And I have to tell them, they have every reason to cry. Because if in 10 years, you could only implement or build 1,900 houses, only 1,900 houses in 10 years. But you now see an administration which in less than a year is doing close to 40,000 houses and is on the verge of accomplishing the promise to do a minimum of 200,000 units per year. Honorable Speaker, I must thank all these members for their diligence, for their commitment, not just to the manifesto that they sold to the people of Kenya, but their commitment to their own constituents who have sent them to come and represent them in this house. These are the heroes of our country. These are the heroes of our country today who have the feelings of their people at heart. Honorable Speaker, we had debate some time back on the cost of living. When we spoke about implementing the Kenya Kwanzaa Manifesto on production subsidies, Others chose to don sufurias on their heads, Honorable Speaker. Today, as I said yesterday, Unga is retailing at a low of 114 shillings from 260 shillings, Honorable Speaker. In the same breath, Honorable Speaker, in another two, three years, the people of Kenya will bear as witness and we will stand vindicated that the decisions we have made today are right for this country, they are for posterity, they will secure the future of millions of our people, Honorable Speaker, and I must thank all these members. Finally, Honorable Speaker, this bill creates an opportunity for infrastructural projects across all our counties, Honorable Speaker, without exception. I am glad yesterday, during the second reading, as we voted during the division, the member for Suba South, the Honorable Carol Yomondi, was keen to note that the first phase of affordable housing in Homer Bay County is complete. Homer Bay County, Honorable Speaker. Ruiru, Honorable Speaker, in my own county in Kiambu, the media have reported to us that the Crime rates in rural constituency, and the member for Ruru is here, he can bear me witness. Crime rates are going down, courtesy of this housing agenda and the jobs created by this housing agenda, Honorable Speaker. And I want to tell the people of Kiku the ground that has been broken between us and Kabeta constituency, 756 units will be done. We broke ground last week, uh, to, uh, a week ago, Honorable Speaker. And very soon they will see those houses coming up. 
the Mugoga Agri City Honorable Speaker that people are speaking about. And I know there are those who, the naysayers, those who, felt like, who feel like crying today, who are instigating people within Kiambu County to oppose this program. Mugoga Agri City will become a reality with a minimum of 14,000 houses. Honorable Speaker, including my good friend, the member for Gidunguri, who I must congratulate her because she did not just oppose this bill. She proposed amendments, although she dropped all the amendments, except for one or two that were also defeated. Honorable Speaker, allow me to also take this opportunity to assure the people of Gidunguri constituency in Kiambu County, they shall not be left behind. They shall not be left behind. And I must again thank the Honorable Kago Alidia, who has helped us in Gidunguri constituency to identify land to build over 2,000 housing units that will also incorporate a cultural center for the Mau Mau freedom fighters who fought for our independence and for our land, Honorable Speaker. The people of Gidunguri shall not and will never be left behind on account of the retrogressive politics that you may find elsewhere, Honorable Speaker. We shall carry everybody aboard, whether it is Homabe, whether it is Kikuyu, whether it is Karachuonyo, whether it is Turkana Central, even the people of Nandi. And I must thank the Honorable Joseph for his diligence to ensure that the people of Nandi benefit. Honorable Speaker, with those very many remarks, I, I wish to request the Honorable Hillary Kosgei, my member of parliament in other quarters, member for Kipkolion West, my ancestral home, to now second. Thank you. No, 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 before you second, before you second. Don Rebo Muchomba, one minute. It is out of order. Is it, out, is it in order, Mr. Speaker, for the Honorable Kemani Ishongwa to mention my name in congratulating me for having put amendments throughout this process? And then I sit with lies that I have dropped all the amendments, yet it is in record that I have not dropped all the amendments. It is not right. This is an honorable house where we speak the truth, and the truth is backed by facts. And the hansard is there, showing that my amendments, not all of them have been dropped. Is it in order for the honorable majority leader, a leader we respect from, from Kiambu County, and even in this house, the member that we give a lot of respect for being the majority leader, and a senior member in this house, to put things that are not factual and true on the floor of the house, Thank you. Thank and worst of all, to attack a woman leader like myself. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Don Bombardi, what is out of order? Uh, Mr. Speaker, the last time I checked, our standing orders were still relevant. And I don't know why this House is encouraging and allowing the majority leader to disparage other colleagues. You can have political differences, but you cannot purport to use the third reading of a bill to talk about your colleague and to disparage her. It is in bad taste, it is wrong. You cannot use your privilege as majority leader, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'm on a point of order. You, know, you are majority no, go, leader go, and you go, don't go even ahead. know the rules. Go ahead, Ron Bombardi. Go ahead. Go Pardon? ahead. Go ahead with your point of order. Mr. Speaker, if you listen to majority leader speak, she's continuously referring to the constituency of another MP. Manu, Close to discussing that member of parliament in, in the house. You came to parliament the other day, my friend. You can't teach me points of order. You came to parliament the other day. Whether elected, you, are, you came the other day. I've been elected three times. So you, you keep quiet when I'm speaking. You get your opportunity. Don't bombardi. Stop heckling. Order. If order, majority, leader, majority is heckling. Majority yeah. majority whip. Order. Order, order members. Order. Don't the only majority whip and the only majority leader. Order. Order. One more body will go on and finish your point of order so that you proceed. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we can't have Could you proceed and finish your point of order? 
Mr. Speaker, and, 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 and remember, Honorable on on Bombardi, the leader of majority, on Bombardi, remember yes. to address the Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'm, I'm speaker. exactly addressing the Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the leader of majority has no authority to misuse his position. That position you have does not mean whether you heckle me, I'll talk. Mimi, you, how many people have heckled me in this parliament? Do I care? You can heckle me for whatever you want. You will not stop me from talking. The Honorable Bombardi, yeah. you have 30 seconds to skip your point of order. Mr. Speaker, the majority leader is out of order. Discussing Gadoni Wamachoma in this house and her constituency. She represents that constituency by right. She was voted. Order members, it's a very small matter. And this matter shall be sorted this way. I've just confirmed from the clerks at the table that the number of Chambers amendments, some of them were moved as required by law. And I would request the Honorable Majority Leader to address that matter as raised by her without, without casting as passions and without, without going personal to her. Thank, thank, you, Honorable, thank, thank you, Honorable thank Speaker. You. And if you listen to me carefully, Honorable Speaker, you hear I said. I congratulated the member for Gidongori for not only opposing the bill but also proposing amendments, some of which she dropped. It is also on record, Honorable Speaker, that many of her amendments were dropped because I have been seated here throughout. Honorable Speaker, the other thing I take offense with, because the Honorable John Buddy rose on a point of order, and he's a ranking member and he knows I respect him as a former leader of minority, but he cannot rise on a point of order claiming that I am disparaging a member for stating a matter that is a matter of fact, then use the same opportunity to attempt to lecture my deputy leader of majority that he came to parliament the other day. The leader of the deputy leader of majority and member for Kilifi South was duly elected by the people of Kilifi South now for a second term. And he was not brought here by anybody. He was brought here by the people of Kilifi South. Unlike John Buddy, who was nominated by his own party, having failed as a governor. You cannot disparage an elected member of parliament when you are nominated on account of Thank having you. failed as a governor. We let the matter lie there, members. I will now call upon the room Hillary to second the motion. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, thank you very much. And uh, I wish to second this motion and to say that, Mr. Speaker, this is a great day for Kenya. Today, Mr. Speaker, studies have shown that by the year 2050, 65% of the population of Kenyans will be urban. What this bill seeks to cure is another Kibera going to the future. And Mr. Speaker, those who were not in the House to, and those who oppose this bill are the ones who have benefited from exploiting the Kenyans who live in slums as voting machines. And Mr. Speaker, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 16, that you shall know them by their fruit. You do not expect people who benefit from slums to support an idea as noble as this, Mr. Speaker. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, I wish to congratulate every member who has sat through this bill, who has helped this country to move forward. And to say that, Mr. Speaker, the generations coming will thank the House that sat to pass this bill for solving a problem, a generational problem, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, even as we create jobs, we are looking forward to rolling out this affordable housing, even in my constituency in Kipkelion, where land is already available for putting up houses. And I want to ask the executive to concentrate Mr. Speaker, first of all, to give housing to those people who support housing so that the new converts will follow once they see the success of this project, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, to congratulate the members of Jubilee for standing with the people of Kenya to pass this important bill and to say, Mr. Speaker, that Kenya will never remain the same. And to thank the President of the Republic of Kenya for scoring many firsts. Giving Kenyans affordable uh, fertilizer, where we got a bumper harvest. Majority Speaker has alluded to the fact that UNGA today 
is uh, retailing for between 110 and 140. And uh, one for 110 and 114. So, Mr. Speaker, these are the benefits of the administration that has chosen to bite the bullet and to do the right thing for the people of Kenya. So, Mr. Speaker, I wish to second and to say thank you so much to the members seated here today and that history will vindicate you in the year, many years to come. Thank you, members. Order. Order. I propose the question, which is that the Affordable Housing Bill, National Assembly Bill number 75 for 2023, be now read at that time. Is it the moment that I put the question? Yes. Thank you. I have. I have. Put the question. I have confirmed that the House is properly constituted for the purpose of making a decision. And I therefore put the question, which is that the Affordable Housing Bill, National Assembly Bill number 75 for 2023, be now read at that time. Will as many of that opinion say aye? Aye. Will as many of that opinion say nay? Nay. The ayes have it. <laughs> Hello, members. I want to thank you so much for your patience this afternoon. And uh, Abin, go ahead. Very good. A bill for an act of parliament to give effect to Article 43. 1B of the Constitution to provide a framework for development and access to affordable housing and institutional housing and for connected purposes. I remember the decision has been made already. We've just completed that process and the bill has now been read at that time. Allow me to thank all of you for your patience and being in the House for this momentous task and thank the Honorable Martha Wangari for her time in this very difficult uh, bill. Next order. Order number 12, motion, report of the National Dialogue Committee, reception of debate. Ah. On this matter, the Honorable Peter Kihugi had a balance of four minutes. Donald Bukihugi. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I start to support the report of the dialogue committee. Mr. Speaker, I want to say that uh, dialogue was extremely necessary for this country because we had come out from a very hard time we had come out from elections, and I want to thank the two principals who agreed to come and sit down and think about the nation. Mr. Speaker, we support the issues that are raised by the dialogue committee, the issue of entrenching the CDF Act in the Constitution, the issue of considering uh, the World Development Fund, especially also the issue of increasing the equitable revenue share for counties from 15% to 20. And uh, Mr. Speaker, also on the issue of constitution of IEBC. IEBC is extremely critical, whereby we come up to a consensus so that we may continue to improve on its performance. Mr. Speaker, one thing I can say is that we have continued to improve on IEBC because most of the issues that have been raised mostly are on the presidential. But when you come to the lower levels where the MCA, the MP, the Senator, the Governor, we are almost perfecting. And if we, ca we come good on this issue, we will be able to perform well on IBC. Mr. Speaker, my issue is on the annexes. The annexes on the amendment of the Constitution. There is somewhere there is an amendment of the term of the member of parliament and the term for the senator. Whereby in the amendment, in the annexes, they have said that the senator should go for seven years and the member of parliament remain at uh, five years. Mr. Speaker, that's an issue I know it can bring contention, 
or division may be among its members, and I wish the committee should consider on that amendment, whereby the senators have been considered for seven years. That is allowed uh, amendment uh, article 105, 102, 103, 105, whereby senators have been considered for seven years. That, Mr. Speaker, is an issue I know can bring issue on the issue of the dialogue. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, it has been said that uh, it will be the, the, the adoption or the amendment in the Constitution will be made by parliamentary initiative. I have seen some members of parliament, maybe who are raising issue, whether we will go for a referendum or we work with Article 256 of the popular initiative by parliament. Mr. Speaker, if I must ask, I could wish we come to consensus whereby we can work on the popular initiative of Article 256, whereby as parliament we can be able to raise the two that, but we come to agreement on the issues that are a bit contentious. My also proposal is that as we add 5% from 15% on the equitable revenue share, we consider the 5% to war development. We have uh, offloaded the national government through NGCDF, through the equitable share to counties. We must also offload the money going to the counties. Because the more you give counties, some of the counties, they increase on personnel. Therefore, the 5% that we are adding from 15% should be considered to go and cater for war development fund so that that money can go directly to development. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, my issue is that, uh, uh, that, uh, my issue is that section where senators, I don't know who did put that because it has been very silent, but when you go to the annexes of the amendment, you find that senators have been considered to go for seven years and the other members are considered for five years. That's an issue I think should be looked at because it can raise issues. The Honourable Wanjiku Muhia. The Honourable John Namoit. Members who don't... The Honourable John Namoit. I have, I have a dashboard that I look at, so I will follow it. The next is the Honourable Beatrice Elachi. No. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I also rise, Mr. Speaker, to speak on this report, to appreciate the committee, to appreciate indeed the President and the Prime Minister for agreeing that a country is more, better, more beyond each one of us. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, as I start, I would want us to really appreciate that even women in this country are Kenyans who came they presented, Mr. Speaker, even as I appreciate the different clauses that are there and appreciating that now when the Senate is going for seven years, it is going to cure the issue of you being a senator. You go or you become a governor, you finish 10 years and you come back to become a senator and you decide you are going to look to your own accounts, which ethically is very wrong. But Mr. Speaker, I want to speak on the issue of the two-thirds gender rule. And to appreciate what the majority leader said, and what the minority leader said, Mr. Speaker, in supporting and ensuring by principle that indeed in the NADCO report, they picked and they recommended indeed we shall achieve the two-thirds gender rule. But Mr. Speaker, we have to come out of the confusion that we have put. When you look at the report, Mr. Speaker, in the intro, it is very clear we presented to BOMAS our recommendations. Thereafter, Mr. Speaker, we had different groups that came in, and you realize the multisectoral also came in, and their presentation was based on the formula. And therefore, by principle, we are saying this House, the 13th Parliament, based on the goodwill of the President, we shall achieve the two-thirds. Mr. Speaker, what I want to plead with this House, that indeed if the report of the multisectoral that deals with the formula, 
is presented in this house procedurally we must adapt since we have not seen the other reports of how we are going to ensure the seven years work how we are going to ensure the mcs fund comes in how we are going to ensure ibc is established and therefore even as the women I am pleading with the leadership, I am pleading with the country, I am pleading to the president, to the prime minister, that when our report comes on the floor of this house, we shall adapt and adapt it as one report with the NADCO report. Mr. Speaker, all these confusions, oh, we are told women are under the bus, we want to say the report is very clear. Article 40, 463, 464 explains very clear what the committee said and what we need to adapt and therefore all i am pleading is to ensure mr speaker this matter of the two-thirds gender rule i am pleading with the national assembly members that we can work as a team and ensure we pass it and therefore i am requesting the ministry to ensure they bring in the report so that we can look at the formula and adapt the formula, Mr. Speaker. I also want to thank every man, every champion who has stood on this agenda, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as I finalize, the most important thing is that when JLAC will be bringing all the, I'll call it omnibus, of all these other proposals that are there, the proposal of two-thirds will be part of it. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, we should not allow again to go back to the days when we are saying, now again the two-thirds will come alone, it will be a standalone. We are saying and we are pleading by procedure, based on what the majority leader and the minority leader agreed, we can agree as a House, support, and I believe the National Assembly will indeed make women of this country know that we are one, we are there to walk a journey together to see the development of our country. Mr. Speaker, it is very sad when women are told in this country that we will have a balloon budget or they will do. Is it only the women? Why is it it is so easy to give seven years to the Senate as much as I'm supporting that proposal? That it is so difficult to agree on this proposal. For me, by principle, I know it is in the report and therefore it will be very unfortunate that we can come and start now speaking on